Hello everyone. Recently, some folks have been asking me about uh, they're wanting to uh, use the alpi phobia on you know alpi in general with the bioalloy premium humanoid. So I create this tutorial here to uh, share with you some of the communication and control concept that you will need to be aware of. So I'm going to show two hardware configuration and then some of the communication and control option that go along with those uh, two configuration. So uh, to be more concrete, shall we say, so I'm going to assume you have a humanoid uh, A, well, premium humanoid A. So you have 18 servo, the X12A. So that's what humanoid look like. You also probably want to add some more extra servos. Uh, in the particular cases, I just say that's just two, and that could be ID 20 and 21. So with two servo like this, you can take the head out and put a pen till uh, platform there if you want to, or you can put each servo on each end of the arms to make like a, a, a small a gripper, you know, a somewhat decent, halfway decent gripper. Okay, so that's what you can do. And one thing I want to get to be clarified right away is you need to be aware of is the extra weight of those two servo will affect the robot balance. Okay, meaning that all the motion file and offset you have nicely done, or robot is already done nicely for you to make this robot walk and playing different tricks, you have to watch out. There's a very good chance you have to adjust the motion file or the motion offset of some of the servo. Uh, if you just move the arm and stuff like that and not walking, you probably can get away with it without adjusting anything here. But if you plan a robot to walk along with these guys, uh, you probably have to do some more work. So I expect that. Also, let's say you have Alpi 4B here and you have Pi camera and you want to integrate that with the uh, Bio Humanoid A. So what do we go about it? So what are the issues that we say? So let's say this is the option A, communication and control option A. Okay. So the CM530 is gonna be keep on staying and using task and motion. Okay. So for motion control, I would advise that you keep the same motion the robot is already created for you, and you access them, and you know you just play motion index to do whatever you need to do. So one through eighteen. You leave that motion file pretty much alone. You may have to affect some of the uh, motion offset and some of the uh, poses to make it to compensate for the uh, shift in the CG of the robot. Now that you have those two or four or whatever extra servo that you're going to have on the humanoid A. Now, what to do with the uh, extra 20 and 21, for example? So, for those, I would suggest that you keep using task control or rather you just use goal position command to control them like for example here directly you know you tell 20 to go to position 512. Uh, the task code also can take care of the local sensor like INIR you can mount here or you can find INIR on the feet to tell you if something is in front of it very close to the feet for example about to trip your robot up and you can use that to influence the motion index basically either stop the motion index or go and do a special maneuver for emergency or something like that. So that's a kind of uh, uh, the option that you need to be kept on CM530. Well, let's, what do we do with the alpi 4 b Now, you know, the alpi 4 b very popular and it, you know, it, it very have lots of features and powerful. So with Pi camera, that they mean it what? We'll extend it, you can use Python. You can use Pi Serial to communicate with the CM530. Of course, you can only use C, C++ also, and then you can use Boost ASU or the uh, even the ancient Robotics Zigbee SDK to communicate with the CM530. Of course, you have camera. Perhaps, for example, you can use OpenCV for image processing, and oh no, you know, all kind of speed recognition and other AI technology. Uh, TensorFlow, oh boy, you can put anything here on the Alpi 4B, okay? So extend your reach and, and make your robot much more interactive this way. Okay, how about communication? 
between R prime 4B and Tassimal uh, and CM530. Now, very important because we are keeping using task in motion on the CM530, the only way you can communicate between the R pi 4B and the CM530 is you use so called robotics remote code packet. Okay, in other video, I show what is this protocol is about and how to do it and how to send it away and stuff like that. Of course, you have uh, your wire option if you want to, or wireless similar communication between R pi 4B and CM530. Yeah, our pi 4 have plenty of uh, serial USB port and other things on GPIO, uh, it's a GPIO bus also. So for example, you can use a Pi camera and OpenCV to figure out some kind of object you're tracking. You can extract from that the object pixel size. You can affect the, uh, the center of mass for the object, the X coordinate and Y coordinate. And then you can use the remote code packet to send it over to the CM530. So the M530 receives the object data. And then the task program, therefore, is really the CM530, then decide on executing the appropriate motion unit, you know, forward, turn left, turn right, or whatever, or moving the head, or whatever, or moving the gripper or something. Uh, so it's to decide on the appropriate motion unit and a goal position command or the extra servo okay so in this scheme here you can see that the CM530 is still doing lots of work okay and the rpi 4 b kind of act like a, a very fancy uh, sensor and for example it can uh, process your speech or something like that and it can process the images but it's act like a sensor because it just sends some information more information to the CM530 who does the, shall we say, the final decision on what the robot is going to do, okay? The robot also on its own hand, remember, it can act locally too. It can decide on its own local sensor. So you have two level of control, and it, but it's done by the CM530. So in this option here, uh, practically the 50 per 50 uh, share in computational load between the RPI4B and CM530. For this option the other option is on the cm530 you're still using task and motion okay and you're still using motion control for the original 18 servo and you should motion pages and stuff like that as normal okay on the pi side you still keep the same python c plus plus beach open cv that sort of thing but the difference now is and you have to do some actual some wiring changes. The AX12, the ID 2021, it's going to be powered by CM530, but it actually controlled by the RPI 4B via the device called U2D2, which is a USB dongle. Okay, so it, and what it does is when you do that, the RPI 4B had to run an extra software called the Dynamics of SHK to control the AX12 directly in you know, the U2D2. Okay. The other videos and that stuff show what to do here. Now, why we want to do that? Like, for example, let's say you have a pen tilt platform. The Pi camera is sitting on it. Well, we're going to find out that when you do this, you have better integration, better response uh, time between Pi camera and how you aim the camera to look for something or, or for tracking some kind of moving target. Or you could use, let's say, you use a Pi camera to see if your arm is up to the level of whatever you're trying to grab yet, and then you can control uh, the gripper that way. So in this way, it's much more responsive than in the previous uh, option A. If you have in your application, you have something like, you need something like this, okay? How about communication between RPI 4B and CM530 there? Now, this get, can get interesting because the direction, if you remember from previously, I didn't mention it, but the direction of data is pretty much one direction from the RPI 4B to the CM530 in the previous option. In this new option here, the data can come direct direction. There are going to be packet, remote on packet flying back and forth between the RPI 4B and CM530. For example, you can use a remote on packet because uh, to send appropriate motion index to the CM530. CM530 receive it and actually implement the motion index or the motion file. Why? Because this one, the Pi camera and I have lots of information about its environment. 
Okay. Especially, for example, you can also use the backward flow from the CM530 to the Alpine because you have some local sensor here. You can read them and send them to the Alpine 4B. So the Alpine will already receive them. It adds all that more information to its camera. To the, it know where the servos 20 and 21 are. It has more sensor here. So it can do much more complicated tasks up on the Alpine now. So in this ex uh, example here, in this option, uh, the Alpi may be doing 80% of the computational load and the CM530 doing about only 20% left, okay? So, but the one last thing I still want the CM530 to do is for the local sensor, I still using them for emergency or special maneuver that you want to affect. Like for example, um, let's say that uh, Alpi 4B use a camera and decide, okay, I want to go somewhere. Let's say it send it, tell it to go forward. But you as an operator, you can play the game where you can throw some kind of obstacle in front of the robot, which is outside of view of the Pi camera. But because you have the infrared sensor on the feet, and the infrared sensor is going to sense the obstacle. So although the op will be tell it, oh, you, you, you need to go forward, your local sensor will tell, oh, I'm not going to do that. So you're going to stop the robot and walk backwards or something until it's clear, okay? So this is still the task control task software is still very good to use. Now I've asked some people where they say, oh, why do you keep on using all these CM controller? Just use the Alpine 4B directly. Yes, you can, but I think I much prefer to have, so we say, a distributed solution where certain things that need to be fast or local, I still like to use my uh, old CM controller and our pi 4 b to do more advanced stuff or uh, more computing intensive more ai which you know it cannot be done on the locally on cm 30 so that's my option so uh of course depending on your actual needs you may have your solution maybe somewhere between option a and option b here okay and that's fine but these are just uh, uh some of the feature or some of the uh, solution I would like to share with you that I know uh, has to work. Now, this is the last slide, and it's sort of <laughs> good news, bad news, and good news again. Okay, so all the previous concepts I, I explained has been applied to the engineering kit in this vo in this volume two of this book. Now, but as a robotics user, you know very well that task and motion work similarly uh, for the ACM five fifty and the CM five thirty. It meaning that all the Premium concept described in this book, you can adapt it to the Barlow Premium. And even more exciting news is uh, when I made this book, uh, CM5, uh, Alpine 4B was, of course, uh, is already around, so I apply it. And as soon as this book is finished, the Alpine Zero 2W became available. Now, this one is also uh, powerful. It's like a equivalent to a 3B. So it's less powerful than the 4B, but it's powerful than the RPI zero that they gave you with the uh, engineering kit. So that's exciting. Now you can see it's a smaller size, it's lighter, it's less capable than the 4B of course, but it has smaller size, lighter. So some of you probably are thinking, hey, I can use this one with a mini. And uh, in theory you can, I haven't done it myself, but this is very possible thing to do.